about everything I know other than the immediate is based on history. Because I've always said that history is my teacher. And I learned through history, and I kind of learned why things are happening today. They just don't happen, I don't think, extemporaneously. They happen because there's a trend, and here we are. I first met Jerry about 25 years ago when we came to one of the historical society's lectures and were awestruck by the amount of knowledge that this man was able to share with us. He loves to talk. We'd sit there for hours just talking about history. I guess that's how I really got involved in it. The best way I can come up with to describe Jerry is incredibly passionate about Key's history. I think one of the extraordinary things about Jerry is not just simply that he knows a lot or that he's researched a great deal. It's his enthusiasm. An easy person to talk to about anything and a person who's willing to tell you maybe even more than you wanted to know about anything at all. My name is Jerry Wilkinson and this is March the 5th, 2021. I never expected to be this known for the Keys history. Well, when I first arrived in the Apple Keys, I didn't find the locals very interested in the Keys, especially the conks who I was going to rely on to tell me the history. We found out that there was little history of the Keys in Key Largo. I'm sure Jerry can, himself can tell you, you know, all of the difficulties that he went through in, in trying to pull information together and traveling around the state of Florida, just because these resources didn't exist here in our community. I could not find any details here. Well, a place like the Keys is so vast with history, and people that live here and visit here don't realize how far back it goes. I think without the knowledge of history, we don't know where we need to go to go forward. We don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past, although we probably will. And we want to be able to learn, learn from where we came, where we're, what we're about. Well, our past is our future. To see what we are now, we have to understand what our past is. I really came to Key West. Other than I had a motorcycle and I hadn't been there. The Navy was still in Key West in 1947. And I was 19 years old. I ended up joining the Army Air Corps because I wanted to join the Navy, but my eyes wasn't good enough. So I went across the hall and joined the Army Air Corps and stayed in the Air Force for 23 years. journey and a very uh, interesting and very uh, time intense, which could have caused a number of divorces, but has not over the years, because things need to get done around the house, and, but history was kind of number one. When we were younger uh, and uh, we started traveling around a lot, uh, we did river rafting in Colorado. We got into doing stained glass. I mean, go to California and go to school, and we taught windsurfing. We did that for years. We were like on a circuit. We actually chose Tavernier after we were living in on Lake Surprise. But we knew we had to buy because if we bought then our would be terrifically expensive. Um, I've, I've always wanted to meet Jerry Wilkinson. 
he is um, a legend. I think it was Kay Wilkinson, uh, no relation to Jerry, who really got him interested in Florida Keys history. She'd come to Tavernier in the 1930s and was very active in the historical society. She was something of a local historian herself. She was getting so she could not drive at night. So that meant I took her to the historical preservation meetings and I hadn't been going to the meetings before. Next thing I knew, I was president. But when we first got involved with it, um, it had not paid its uh, corporate dues, I think, at, or IRS in a number of years. Jerry was asked to be, become the president and to revise it or whatever. The key should have a historical society because there's such a treasure here in the Keys of how we came to, to be, how people came to settle these islands. It was a very inhospitable place in the late 1800s and early 1900s. So to be able to scratch out a life here uh, and build a community and survive after hurricanes and droughts and things like that is really quite remarkable. When he was doing his research uh, for the last several decades, nothing here locally really existed. It was all down in Key West. You had to go down and see Tom Hambright in the library, or you had to go up to Miami or someplace else to find any little bit of Key's history. Anybody wanting to do research in the Upper Keys basically had to come here to start. We forget in the age of the internet where a lot of things are online and stuff. The 1980s, if you wanted to see something, you had to go to wherever it was. We went traveling for years when we had the fifth wheel, looking for Keys history other places than in the Keys. The Overseas Railroad was an incredible feat of engineering, uh, connecting mainland Florida to the Florida Keys, all the way to Key West, over 120 miles. Uh, crossing dozens of islands and the sea, including a seven mile stretch of open ocean. People thought it was impossible. It was called the eighth wonder of the world. It was globally famous. These papers from the son of the engineer, William Arkham, they were written by the person who's doing the work. He kept diaries, he I missed diaries. He showed us his uh, collection of stuff from his father, which was almost as badly kept as some of the stuff that we kept at our house. It was in a closet. But these are all written from his memory, and as well as photographs and engineering studies. Because he was an engineer, he was just not a surveyor. And over many, many weeks and months or whatever, he would let us take out a handful of these pictures and maybe the uh, scrapbooks that uh, uh, Crumb's uh, mother had collected over the years. And we would go to Office Depot and Homestead and copy, 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 and then bring them back and he'd give us more. He never gave us all of it at one time, but he would give it, he would dole it out. Uh, Office Depot uh, made quite a fortune off of the Chrome papers. <laughs> Well, just about what history we have and what's written down has all been work of Jerry's. Jerry discovered a lot of history, not only through documents and records, but also through talking with people. He collected the stuff and he found out who the people were, and a lot of them were still alive when he started. So he was able to go out and, and interview, sometimes uh, take them. I'd already seen by interviewing people that these people aren't here forever, all of us. We're going to be gone, and that is gone. Some of the people Jerry interviewed were survivors of the 1935 Labor Day hurricane. A devastating Category 5 storm killed over 400 men, women, and children, including more than 250 veterans working on the new overseas highway. Now, this was a major disaster. And it's the great third hurricane of 1935, the strongest barometric, uh, the, the lowest barometric pressure of any hurricane that made landfall on the northern hemisphere. 
And we have a great pleasure here to be in the house of Alma Bender as well as the Laureate Bender. Then all of a sudden water began to leak in under the door. But they finally decided that we should get out of the house. And all of a sudden the house disappeared. I don't know whether it blew up or a tornado hit it. And of course we were thrown all kinds of ways. Well, they opened the parsonage where the uh, parsonage uh, the pastor and his wife had drowned had drifted over this way. Yeah. Our daddy, Aunt Camille, and our father, and two of Uncle Fred's children were killed. It was in the house. When he got to be president, then we started having monthly meetings. I don't even remember the first time I went to a meeting. You know, Jerry's been doing the meetings for many, many years, and I liked history, so I just started going to the meetings, and just got the more I went, the more I enjoyed going. Uh, and with the history talks, when he started printing those up, people would love to get the history talk. And I started producing a 16-page glossy folded, punched pamphlet that I sent out quarterly. Uh, the history talks he published. That's the second part, you, you, you know it together, but you've got to promote it so you get other people interested in it. I became known uh, you know, for presentations to different chambers of commerce and things like that. So they, I think, because it was free. And I, I enjoy his presentation so much. I enjoy his warmth in sharing the information that he has gathered over the years. I appreciate his frankness when he doesn't know the answer to a question. He just says, I don't know. I think a few sisters, her and sisters, but I don't know about that. When I started doing reenactments, and then they would know who James Audubon was. They would kind of have a feeling for uh, Henry Flagler or Dr. Perrine, something like that. So it stimulated them because they were seeing something visually. And Dagny Wolf saw that, so she conned me in to write in a reporter. Now, the reporter was the Upper Keys newspaper. If you really want to do anything, you, you got it in the report. And then we decided to write a bit of Key's history. I didn't realize the challenge of writing something every week. I mean, it's good for the first five, six weeks, and seven, eight weeks, but 20. I believe I said the website was put bits of Key's history all over the world. I don't know if you've seen his, the website, but yeah, it's been very thorough with our history. The uh, internet was just getting started. I just bought books on HTML, HTML2, and I learned all the code, and so I did my own coding. Uh, it was very, very time consuming for Jerry. The, and the fact that, I mean, he really did love it. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. But the man would spend hours. Along come Brad Bertelli. And Brad has, I believe, a master's degree or something in English from the University of Miami. I think we first wrote the book on the history of Key Largo. And then Al Morata. So along come a certain lady whom I love and however, Laura Auburn. It was wonderful to uh, collaborate with him. And we wrote the history of Duval Street and Marathon. And Marathon as well as the one that I liked the best was kind of a hidden history of the Keys. And so that kind of ended. No other book has been considered after that. We've tried preserving a lot of businesses and villains and things, but we're not doing a very good job at that. The fire department was my biggest enemy. They needed real fires to train their firemen. They burnt down a lot of colleges. There were very small houses where the early settlers, Harry David, the first black fire chief in Monroe County, and it, they burnt his parents' house down. As a, but he was a fire chief, so he was as guilty as any of the rest of them. 
There's nothing like a real fire to help, help them work out. But come on, guys, you know, let's don't use a historical artifact. When they want to start the History and Discovery Museum, they come here in these same chairs and sit and talk with me because they had no artifacts. They had really basically nothing. And I had these 7,500 photographs. We started in 2014 with uh, blank blue walls and uh, not much else. So I gave them all of these, all the files, not only photographs, all the files. And Brad was my vice president of the Historical Society, so they hired him. And started building exhibits with our wonderful curator, historian Brad Fratelli. He and I, and soon another staff member, Aaron Muir, along with our board of directors, was able to build out this museum that represents hundreds of years of history in the Keys. They set up a library in my name so that other researchers could do research. The Jerry Wilkinson Research Library is a critical asset to our local community. The Jerry Wilkinson Research Library is also another one of the treasures of the Florida Keys, a, a place for people to go and be able to do work on original documents about the development of the Keys. During Hurricane Irma, the back room where he had all his archives, everything got wet in there. I mean, in stacks and stacks of stuff. So I live in a stilt house, and the downstairs is all open. So I took boxes after boxes of stuff home and spread it all out under my house and dried it out. He lost some stuff, but not a lot. And he's also provided us a vast amount of his collection, but some of which was destroyed in Irma. You have a lighthouse in your yard. <laughs> What's that about? Well, let me explain that lighthouse in our backyard to you, because that could have been another contention for a divorce. Uh, I was painting the house, mind you, while I am out on scaffolding. Him and my dad are in the backyard building a lighthouse. It is a very nice attraction, but um, seriously? <laughs> Jerry has really been an incredible leader in the effort to record and preserve the history. And I, I think of him as sort of a Pied Piper of Florida Keys history. A national treasure, I think, a Keys treasure for, for the repository of history that he has to share. And then everything we kind of got into, stained glass, Thank the you. river routing, even the history. She was an equal part of all these publications and so forth. Wow, what a good team you are together. I know, yeah, I right. know, it is right. terrible, right? Yeah. You guys, that's, that was good It stuff. wouldn't have happened without her. Yeah. Now that we've arrived here, I would not change a thing. Knew that we'd survive here and all the goodness we would bring. This I sing, everybody swimming in sunshine, everybody feeding fine, everybody join the front line, ain't nobody left behind. Everybody swimming in sunshine, everybody feeling fine, everybody join the front line.